I'm doing this very special edition podcast because I've talked to a number of people over the past few days about uh, just putting up with bureaucracy. And it's always people about, you know, late teens to 20s. There's something about your 20s, about 18 to 28, where the, the, the problems of bureaucracy, the problems of life, uh, it's, it's always got skin, it's always got faces, it's always got names, and those problems hit you, at least if you're a mover and a shaker, if you're going somewhere in your life, if you, if you're a good person who makes a difference for people, you will face bureaucracy and be frustrated with it. If you go through your 20s, if you get to 28 years old and you have never encountered a bureaucracy and been frustrated with trying to deal with just stupid, stupid culture that should not be allowed to live. If you don't encounter that, maybe you're not a good person. Maybe, maybe you need to reevaluate your life. Maybe you're a good person, but you're not doing good things. You're, you're hiding. Good people do good things and they try to make a positive difference. And if you have never, I mean, the reverse is true. If you have, you're, you're on, you're on the mark. They said in Vietnam, if you're not taking flack, you're not over the target. Uh, the, the Vietnam war that is, uh, no one told me that when I was in the country over there. Interestingly though, uh, I was talking one of the kids, quote unquote, that I was talking with was Vietnamese, but I'll get to that. We've got to start with understanding it. Facing bureaucracy, facing a, a, a culture somewhere. There's usually a culture that goes with it. You've, you've got like a, an institution and then a culture around it. Uh, the company, in, in that case, if, if you're up against a company, you've got the management, you've got the executives, you've got accounting, you've got HR, and well, I, I mean, I, I hope that it's not IT, George. I mean, I, I, I work with Linux, but I'll tell you, IT guys can really be dumb. They can be. Any, you know, if it were my mother here, she'd say, Jesse, anyone can be dumb. I think that's, so I, I, I wouldn't limit it to any particular one department. Everyone's dumb in their own style. So they, when you're IT, you're used to IT's dumbness and you're part of the IT dumbness problem. That's usually how it goes. So accounting has their accounting dumbness and their accounting dumb problem. And really, it's not the dumbness that bothers you. It's that you're used to your own problems and you don't want to put up with other people's different types of problems. That's usually why there's interdepartmental fights. But if it's a company, if that's the bureaucracy that you hit, you know, it, you've got the culture of the employees as a whole, you know, the, the, the little bottom guy trying to make stuff work. Without him, there wouldn't be a show. And you've got the rich fat cats who are, uh, you know, up orbiting, out of touch with reality, making a bunch of bad decisions. And, and, it's, and the problem is the culture of the employees won't stand up to the bureaucracy. If, if, if they get a union... Then the union has its bureau, you know, it's got its nonsense and, and, you know, they contribute to that. They'll go on strike, but they don't actually solve the problem. And you know, everyone dances around the problem. If what you're dealing with is a, a local congregational fellowship, which a lot of people mislabel a church, a church. I'll go back to Francis Chan. He said it uh, one thing in Kansas City this year at, it's called the One Thing Conference. He said that... Uh, he said what I've been saying for years, that going to church, it doesn't make sense. You are the church. But if you've got some little bureaucracy, a congregational fellowship, and you don't know, you know, they don't know that. They think that they are a church. They've got their bureaucracy thing going on. Maybe that's a bureaucracy you're dealing with. You've got a pastor who's breaking rules, violating bylaws, right and left, firing people when he doesn't have that authority. 
And you've got the elders who sit and let him do it. And you've got the, the congregation that complains but doesn't change. They don't require any change. They just complain. You've got a culture. There's always a bureaucracy and a culture. It's just the two. You know, Germany, you had the Nazis and then you had the German people who went along with it. You've got the bureaucracy and the culture. It's always these two. And it hits you if you're a good person who's trying to make the world a better place. Invent useful things. You're trying to, you're a teacher in the school system. You're trying to help your students learn. And it's an uphill battle to, to help, you know, Alexander learn something. I've got a good A, B, C. And, you know, the principal's pulling me to his office because I did A. And the other teachers are complaining because I did B. And mom and dad are whining because I did C. And it's like, it, it, it was like the lady said on Fox. She was facing her bureaucratic stuff. Sexual harassment's another type of thing. She, 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 oh, she was railing against Fox. Remember, remember the lady? She was on, uh, I believe it was CNN, who was glad to report something bad about the other network when they probably had the same stuff going on. Again, everyone's got their problems. Remember that lady? She said, we just want to work. We just want to do our jobs. We just want to work. And it's like you're trying to make a difference and you run into this, this, this milieu, this unholy alliance between bad bureaucracy and a lazy, apathetic culture that goes along with it and supports it. And sooner or later, it will hit you if you're a good person who's trying to make a difference in the world. It will hit you if you've never had a problem with that. Ne you lo never lost sleep over it, been sitting arguing with someone in your head instead of falling asleep. You know what I mean. If you've never had that happen to you, maybe you're a bad person because you're not trying to do enough good things. You're not trying to help enough people. You're not trying to make enough of a difference. And so you're not taking any flack because you're not over any targets of value. You're not over anything that matters. Which means that if you are up against these types of problems and these types of things are hitting you, it's probably because you are making a difference. You've put yourself in the line of fire. But Jesse, that's not what, no one's mad at me because I'm trying to do something good. No, no, you're running into stupid bureaucracy because you're where you're supposed to be if you're going to do something good. It doesn't directly relate. That's not how life works. It, it's not... You tried to help that person. Oh, it, it's not that. It's, I don't like your tone. It's, I, did, did you take enough classes? Are you certified to, to do what you're trying to do here? How, how do you know? That? It's always about something else. What, one guy is about payroll. I won't say the name of the company. I could. In fact, you know, it's tempting for me to say the name of the company and see what happens to their stocks. That would be a measure of the influence of my podcast. I, I won't get into the whole thing about uh, Trump uh, saying what I said on January 4th, uh, which, which I had already written and, and published on January 2nd. That without him, there wouldn't you know, be the necessary pressure to get North Korea to even you know, talk or anything. Welcome to reality. Sky calls me. He's frustrated with his company. And it's just, they're not being fair to the employees. He's there in the first place because he's a good person trying to make a difference. And now he runs into these problems. Talk with another kid. He was trying to go to college in Taiwan. And the obnoxious education culture, they literally call teachers gods. Christian pastors in Taiwan will say that a teacher is a god. Little g. It's, it's abominable how much the culture tolerates that. E even if the pastor doesn't agree with it, he'll say he's like a god in our culture. Like that's still how they talk, even though the pastor may not agree with it. What, now, what will the pastor do to stop it? <laughs> he did a fat chance. He'll perpetuate it. He's part of the culture side of the mess. This, 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 this kid was in Taiwan trying to study and they wouldn't teach him. He'd, he'd, he'd pay the tuition. He'd go to class. He'd have to 
try to figure out what his homework was going to be. He'd have to try to figure out what the test was going to be about. He'd have to go try to figure out how to learn because he didn't learn anything at all in the classes that he was attending. He just, there wasn't... He had to pay in order to fight an uphill battle just so that he could do everything totally on his own himself without any help. And he got tired of it. He It, it burned him out. He got exhausted. See, I knew. I knew that if I did this very special edition podcast, someone was going to message me. And it doesn't have anything to do... With, hold, see, now the refrigerator's making noise. Now the refrigerator... Hold on, I'm gonna, I've got to pause this. See, that, that was it right there. I just had to go move the refrigerator over. For some reason, the refrigerator decided to move up against the wall one time the whole year. It's probably, it's probably been three years since it made that noise. And of all times that the refrigerator goes and decides to move up against the wall and vibrate when it comes on of all times right now while I'm doing this, it had to be now. That's, it's not related. It, it, it's like there's demons running around in some sort of a conspiracy to interfere with me while I'm talking about, you know, interfering with people that are trying to do good stuff. You're just going to face that stuff. And it does, it doesn't say, it doesn't claim that it is directly connected to what you're doing. It doesn't have to be. It's, you're up against the storm because you went outside. It's all, it's, you know, I'm you go outside to, to, to walk the dog and pull some apples off the tree. Well, guess what? The wind blows, it starts raining, you get wet, and, and your hat blows off. What's the hat had to do with the dog? I don't see how walking the dog means I lose my hat. Look, you wanted to do something good, you went outside, outside stuff happened to you. That's what this is about. And you have to see the level on which it connects. Everything doesn't have to be direct. You have to see the connection to the big picture. Well, that, that kid in Taiwan, he, he got exhausted from the whole thing and just had to give up and, and, and he went back home. Now, I don't agree with his decision. I, I know the guy. I definitely understand it. Um, maybe it just, it wasn't his time. It wasn't, it wasn't his battle. So he didn't have the unction to finish. Maybe that was it. Maybe, maybe that was just sort of a detour in his life, a, a scenic visit. And he's going to go on to fight other battles in other places and, and make a more powerful difference somewhere else. But he didn't, he didn't finish that one. Now, I had another friend who was very irritated with his company, which I won't say the name of, even though I could I could prove some stuff and watch their stock, their stock seriously take a tumble. But I won't do that. Um, at least not yet. I'll tell you, you know what? If you're having bad stories about something, if you've got frustrated with your college bureaucracy, if you're frustrated with a company, you can call me and tell me. I'd like to know. Um, I, uh, well, there's nothing wrong with telling me because I haven't told anybody, Right. Right, exactly. So I'm safe, right? So, but this guy, you know, he was frustrated with his company, that my, this, this other buddy of mine. And he said, Jesse, what do I do? I said, I said one, if you want to push through this and come out the other side, you need to be reading your Bible every day. He, the kid is Christian. I said, you've, you've got to have that stuff going into you. Second thing, this is not your fight. Don't worry about it. A supervisor once told me, I was, I was working at a place, I won't say which. He said, Jesse, you're trying to make everything too wonderful. You come here to work, we all argue with each other, we finish our jobs, we go home, we get paid, come back tomorrow, do it again. Just, just get it done and get your money and do, do your work to standard. Cut with us trying to exceed standards for people that don't want to. Just do the job good enough. The boss is happy. Go home. Leave it at that. Don't try to make it more perfect than the boss wants it to be. So if you've come up against bureaucracy and you don't know what to do, it's probably because you're trying to teach pigs how to play piano. You know, my, my grandmother told me, she says, Jesse, you should never try to teach a pig how to play piano. You don't get much accomplished and it really annoys the pig. I think that joke was originally about pigs singing, but grandma and I were piano players. So, you know, when, when you have a 
when you have a piano in front of you, everything looks like a piano. I, in fact, that was what my grandmother told me when I was frustrated with the, with the church bureaucracy. Another, another kid came up, Vietnamese kid. What, what is this? What's beeping? Something's beeping and I don't know what it is. I told you, of all times, I'm up against this stuff. I've never heard that beep before in my life. But it's, something's beeping at me. <sighs> this Vietnamese kid came up to me last night. He said, my family needs money. Can you loan me money? I said, well, uh, you know, the, the, lo- the short version is I don't have money to loan. Um, and if I had it, I would just give it. That's another thing too. Never loan money. Either give it or don't. Don't. Don't keep a list of people you got to collect stuff from. That, that's, you, you'll, go cra- you'll drive yourself crazy. If you can afford to loan money, you can afford to lose the money. So just give it away and bless people. If you can't do that, don't do it. And I told the kid, I, I had a, a, a friend in my life that at one point he was very poor. He had two baby girls and he was building his home. They were living outside with no doors. The, the bedroom wall was a curtain in a large barn in the winter. It was below zero. And that's where his family with his two baby girls lived while they were building their house. And the building inspector looked back into the barn and said, wait, you guys aren't, you know, I don't want to know. I don't, I don't want to know. And he went and inspected the building, not the place where they were supposedly living. That guy pushed through in his life and went on to become extremely wealthy. At one point, he was making $50 million a year, U.S. And he told me, a lot of times when you just give people money, you make the problem worse. It's not a money problem. It's a thinking problem. And the only way out is through when it comes to their problems. The only way out is through. You've got to go through it. And that thinking took him to that point where he's making lots of money. Now he's in Florida, he's retired, and and he's he's still telling people, you've got to have a dream. Not not a comfortable little job. You've got to have a dream and ambition to pursue and go get it done. You've got to have that. And if you don't have that, it's game over time. And I told this kid, giving money isn't always going to help. I said, the best thing, he's 18, I said, the best thing you can do for your family in Vietnam is that you keep your job and you don't become dependent, don't be a financial burden to people. That's the best thing you can do for your family. You, lifeguard train, when I got trained as a lifeguard, they said the most important thing as a lifeguard is that when you go to rescue someone, you don't drown yourself. That, that, that friend of mine that was poor and became wealthy. He said, if you give away all your money, you can't give your money away anymore. He actually got that advice personally from Rich DeVos. And that's, you know, it's the man in the mirror. Look at the man in the mirror. You yourself do things that are in, that are, as we say, unjust and do injustice to other people. You do them. You do things that are wrong to other people. Uh, clean that up. You know, bring that down. Focus on that. What you do hopefully isn't as bad as what people do to you. But you've got control over yourself, the man in the mirror. Look at that. When you're facing bureaucracy and the second thing, that bureaucracy that you're up against is not your battle and it's not your decision. Just grin and bear it and go through it and focus on your real mission, which is probably your friends, your family that you go to after you get home and you're done dealing with those things. The other people that are still there with you, whether you stay with this thing or not. I had another friend in Taiwan. He was working for a big company. I could say which. They were cutting corners and breaking the law 
when it came to safety regulation. He was hired by the company to be the internal auditor for safety, for workplace safety. He was certified. It's, it's like OSHA type of stuff. Occupational safety. He's certified in Taiwan. And his own company would not listen to his advice that they pay him to give where he's certified, where he said, I'm certified and I know that we're breaking the law with these safety regulations. And his own boss wouldn't listen. Large factory. I've seen the floor. He asked me once, should I call the government inspector and tell them about this? He said, they won't listen to me. They won't listen. They just won't listen. How old was he? 24. No, nah, maybe 23 at the time. Again, 20s is when it hits. He said, they just won't listen. I said, your company did not hire you to rat you out to the inspector. Your company hired you so that they wouldn't have problems with the inspector. Now, that doesn't mean that you help them to lie. That means that you need to document everything that they're doing and keep it in your uh, personal at the company file in your file at the company, document what they're saying, keep it internal, keep trying to make recommendations to the company, be like grandmama in the movie Soul Food, who just comes in and doesn't judge people, doesn't smack people around, but just make it okay. Just just take the problem and make it okay and keep the kids from fighting with each other. Keep, you know, dripping, keep telling them to make changes Get a plan, move it forward. And if the inspector ever shows up, you're supposed to go there to the inspector and say, one, Mr. Inspector, thank you for coming. Thank you for saying these things that I've been saying for a long time. Here are my records. Here where I, here's where I've been saying it to the company. The company hasn't been listening to me. Two, company, see, I told you, inspector's here. Three, here's my plan, Mr. Inspector. This is what I've been trying to do These are the steps I've been taking to try to get our company into compliance. That's what you're supposed to do. The kid got it. He understood it. He was with the company for a year after that. He moved on. They threw him a party when he left. They cried when he left. He went on to another boss, another insufferable boss. All the other employees quit but him. He couldn't handle the pressure from the insufferable boss. He quit. The boss cried and decided to pay him contract for it. (laughs) <laughs> and now he's starting his own occupational safety hazard stuff. I just signed him up as a client for web servers just yesterday. Focus on the real battle. Focus on your hobby. Focus on your family at home. Don't try to, don't try to teach pigs how to play piano. If you're dealing with stuff like this, look at the man in the mirror. The way out is to go through it. Don't self-destruct. Don't quit. Keep dripping. By you being in that culture, you're a virus. You're microscopic compared to the problem. But you can kill the entire thing. You are contagious. You're not the only one. You are not the only one. Look at me. You're not the only one. Keep dripping. Keep smiling. Give other people hope. Tell the people around you that they don't have to put up with this. If you leave, those people won't be around you anymore and then you can't keep being contagious and infectious. Read your Bible. Not... I don't mean go to a pastor that's going to heap condemnation and, and, and a fighting argumentative mentality onto you. Go read Jesus. Open up the Bible and read any of the letters that are read. Get good ideas going into you with all the garbage. Be immune to the problem, but you've got to have good stuff going into you. Have a hobby. Have a potentially profitable hobby that's beneficial. I don't need to elaborate because I'm already long.
If you want to hear more, go back and listen again. There's probably stuff that you missed. It happens to people from about 18 to 28. It's normal. You're not special. You are different, just like everyone else. It happens to everyone. It's old news. It's boring. It's not newsworthy. It's not worth your time to mull over. It's old. It happens to everyone. Just go through it and keep your eye on the real ball. Keep your focus on the real game. What's your real game? It's not to teach the bureaucracy how to play piano, a.k.a. the pigs. You're there to be infectious. You're there to drip hope with some other people around you. Take the way through. It takes a long time. It takes love for someone. The people that you you encourage, the people at home that you help, the culture as a whole that can change if you stick with it. Love, patience, forbearance. The things that Jacob Marley told Scrooge were his business. Take that route. Take the long route. Struggle with it. Bear with it. And you will be able to accomplish things through patience and continuous action. It's called perseverance. Perseverance is a thing where you take action. And because you take action, you've got to be patient or it's all going to be over. So now you've created the need to be patient because you're out trying to make a difference. It's easy to not have any problems to be patient with. Just stop trying to make a difference. It's not just being patient when you have to wait for someone. You created the need to be patient in the first place with action that you could stop taking and you wouldn't need to be patient anymore. But, you know, then you don't get all the fun and the accolades that come with it. You didn't go through. You don't have those accomplishments under your belt. You don't become strong. You don't get the thick skin. You don't get the endurance. It's interesting. Right now, over in Taiwan, there's this giant, cold. It's a it's a it's a it's a low it's a low pressure snake. Usually, there's a low pressure cell. There, it's just a big old blob of low pressure, a big old blob of high pressure. Well, this is not a low pressure cell. It's a low pressure snake. There's this giant snake in the atmosphere across the Pacific Ocean slithering over the air and it's low pressure and it's cold and it's rainy and it's right over Taiwan right now. And it's really annoying. I go outside and my face hurts. This is supposed to be tropical. And I, I, I know that it's good. I know that it's necessary. All the, all the trees are growing on the inside. Their roots are, are, are going down deep so they can keep warm. There's all kinds of good things that happen because of the difficult weather we deal with. That's what perseverance is about. You go somewhere and now because you went there, you got to be patient. And you keep being patient and you keep going. And you keep going and fighting and you stay up late and you try to get to bed early if you can or take care of yourself, which is difficult. An uphill battle and keep focusing, keep working, keep with it, problem solve. Well, actually, it's a solve problems. Problem solve. Problem solving is a noun. I don't like people. I need to problem solve. No, that, that's that's not a word. Solve problems. Keep keep at the problem solving, which is a gerund, by the way. Keep at it. Keep going. And if you go through it, you'll be strong, and you will come out the other side, and you will be stronger, and you will make an infectious difference. You will if you persevere and don't give up. I'm Jesse Steele, jessesteele.com.